You might have heard the phrase to rest on your laurels. It's the person who's become lazy and complacent because of former glories, the person who's won the World Cup in the past and yet thinks, well, I don't have to practice now, I don't have to do anything, I'm going to win everything. They're resting on their laurels. And Solomon was saying much along the same lines uh, 3,000 years ago, as he wrote the book of Proverbs, he said to rely not just on your former glories, but on your assets, your riches now, without putting into place wise uh, actions and thoughts and plans uh, to rest on your laurels uh, is hopeless. It's foolish and unwise. And he applies it in several different areas of life. Uh, and, and he shows that how we can do it in, in lots of different ways. And here's the foolishness of it. We're in Proverbs chapter 11 and we pick it up in verse 22. A beautiful woman who rejects good sense is like a gold ring in a pig's snout. The desire of the righteous turns out well, but the hope of the wicked leads to wrath. One person gives freely yet gains more, another withholds what is right only to become poor. A generous person will be enriched, and the one who gives a drink of water will receive water. People will curse anyone who hoards grain, but a blessing will come to the one who sells it. The one who searches for what is good seeks favour, but if someone looks for trouble, it will come to him. Anyone trusting in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like foliage. The one who brings ruin on his household will inherit the wind, and a fool will be a slave to someone whose heart is wise. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and a wise person captivates people. If the righteous will be repaid on earth, how much more the wicked and sinful. There's more to what he's saying here, but he certainly is saying don't rest on your laurels. Whether that the thing you're relying on is your natural beauty, uh, he says you can't do that. If you don't add wisdom to beauty, it's like the, the gold ring on a pig's snout. It's a really kind of offensive thing, isn't it? It's, it's, it's wasted. It's, it's gaudy. It's, it, in the end, it's ugly right and so yeah he says that about the beautiful woman uh, without wisdom but also the one who uh, trusts in his riches will fall if you think that that i've got this big bank account i've got all these assets uh, that'll see me right i don't have to be wise and i certainly don't have to relate to god it's as if the riches become our our god and uh, we think it's going to save us and help us protect us. We're warned about it over and over again in the scriptures. Ecclesiastes, Solomon said the same thing there, that your money can run out on you at any moment and to trust in your riches is hopeless. And the New Testament says much the same thing when it calls greed idolatry. It's saying you're making this false God out of it. And 1 Timothy chapter 6, we're told to to, to, uh, Timothy's being told to command those who are rich in this world not to rely on their riches which are so fleeting and and frail they can't you can't just rest on your laurels if you like whether those laurels are riches whether they are beauty whether they are hoarded grain yeah you know, there's all kinds of problems that can come with that without true wisdom and their righteousness without knowing the lord he says the one who uh, curse people curse the one who hoards grain you've got all this stuff you think well that's okay i'm sitting pretty and stuff but there's resentment there's hatred there may even be theft down the track but you know, there's blessing that comes to the one who sells it. And partly he's reflecting, isn't he, God's upside down world where it is more blessed to give than to receive and to say, well, I'll take, take, take. I'm going to rest on all this stuff that I have, whether it's my physical beauty, my stamina, my riches, my <laughs> whatever it might happen to be. He's saying his foolishness, you've got to trust God and live for God and act wisely and use that thing wisely to bring blessings to other people in life, to uh, show your heart towards God and that you reflect his character. See, why be generous? Well, well he says, well, because it's going to last long time, but we're generous because God's generous towards us. He's lavished on us so many things that we don't deserve and particularly the blessing of salvation. He's with us day by day. He gives us comfort when we haven't comforted necessarily others, uh, but his comfort enables us to comfort others. And so what he's saying is this heart of wisdom doesn't rest on our laurels. It puts into uh, action, the uses the assets that we have in order to do good things in God's world for his glory, for other people's benefit. 
And the wisdom of it all is that that it comes back to us, not in an automatic kind of way, like, you know, uh, th- that, you know, it's a one for one trade or anything like that. But God's favor and blessing is on those who have been transformed by him to be like him and who will plan for the future, who will uh, act wisely and be kind and generous towards others. And in the end, he says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. That is not just for their own benefit and blessing, but it's a tree of life for all. It overflows and a wise person captivates people, captivates them in a way that even the, the stunning beauty won't, right? That might get a, 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 you know, a glance and look down the aisle at that kind of ogling look, but no, 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 the wise person is the one who's able to answer and give instruction for life and so on. And so, <coughs> I beg your pardon, and so what are you uh, investing in? Are you investing in other people? Are you investing in wisdom and searching after God and having a heart like his, uh, seeking to bring him glory as you love other people and love him? Uh, or are you hoarding and holding on and just resting on your laurels? What a foolish thing we've been wise against to do, whether it's our beauty, riches, whatever else, don't rest on your laurels. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are the only reliable one, the only one who can provide for us, the only one who has provided for us. And we pray that we'll return all the glory to you. Help us to be generous like you are generous and help us never to trust in our beauty, in our riches, in our savings, in our assets, in our hoarding, um, because it could all go in the blink of an eye. The things of this world are fleeting and frail and uh, people resent those who are only in it for themselves. But we thank you that you've given this wisdom from thousands of years ago that's still so meaningful for today that challenges us and transforms us. We pray that we'll heed your warnings and that we will live your way and seek to be wise and use the things we have been given by you for your glory and other people's benefit. And we pray, please, that we will be those righteous people who are a tree of life. Thank you that in Jesus there's forgiveness for when we've mucked up. And thank you that in Jesus there is transformation from being the selfish, self-centered people who love resting on our laurels to being people who are active and serving you. Please keep doing that work in us. Transform us more and more each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.